put it on our website as well. We don't have a hard copy of it over there. So they're on the lock.
Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yes. Is this the is this the news conference? <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. Thanks. I good? Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Dave DeVillers. I'm the United States Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio. I am joined here today by Chris Hoffman, the uh, special agent charged with the FBI. Uh, here's what we like to do today. I'll go ahead and uh, make some statements, and then uh, special agent charge Hoffman will make some statements, and then I'll come back to answer some questions that, that you may have. Uh, you're going to get my disclaimer. Now, these are only allegations at this point. These uh, defendants deserve the, the uh, presumption of innocence, and we're going to give it to them. Everything we say in the next few minutes are allegations and only allegations. We're here today to announce the arrest of Larry Householder, the Speaker of the House of the State of Ohio, and four other defendants um, for racketeering in relation to what is likely the largest bribery money laundering scheme ever perpetrated against the people of the state of Ohio. Uh, the conspiracy was to pass and maintain a $1.5 billion bailout in return for $61 million in dark money that were used for various things. Uh, one, to line the pockets of the defendants. Two, to build a power base for Larry Householder. And three, to further the conspiracy, that is to further the affairs of this, this enterprise. Make no mistake, these allegations are bribery, pure and simple. This was a quid pro quo. This was play, pay to play. And I, I use the term pay to play because that's the term that they've used as alleged in the affidavit. Company A, uh, we have a, a very, very, very rough diagram of, of what we're talking about here today. The real diagram would take up probably most of this wall. Right? Company A is the is provided the sixty million dollars in, in return for the one point five billion dollar bailout. Everyone in this room knows who Company A is. I will be not mentioning the, the name of Company A because of our regulations and rules. Uh, they have not and no one from that company has as of yet been charged. So I will be referring to this as, as Company A. It was vital to success of this, this enterprise, this conspiracy, that no one knew that Company A's $61 million would be used to do everything to further the affairs of the enterprise. That was the key to the enterprise, the success of the enterprise. In order to do that, The conspiracy had to create Generation Now. Generation Now is also charged as an entity to the indictment. Uh, Gener Generation Now is what we call a 501c4, all right? And a 501c4 does not have to disclose the donors to this entity, this enterprise, unlike a PAC or a super PAC that always has to disclose the source of their donations uh, to the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission. 501c4s are not regulated by the Federal Election Commission, but by, by the IRS. And it is very difficult for any civilian to get anything from the IRS outside their own taxes, and in fact, often, often us as well. But in any event, they do not have to come out to, to announce and disclose their donors. That's the key. Now, 
A 501c4 is actually operated exclusively to pr promote social welfare. It's a social welfare entity. That's what it's supposed to be used for. And it's more defined on what it's not supposed to be used for. It is not and cannot financially benefit a shareholder or individual. In this case, it did. Political, act political activity cannot be its primary activity. In this case, it was. And it cannot intervene politically in a political campaign on behalf or against any candidate. And in this case, it did. Not a dime of the money of the $61 million that was filtered to Generation Now by Company A went to any social program. There were no members that donated to this 501c4. $61 million was donated completely by Company A through some other sources, sometimes directly to Generation Now, sometimes through another 501c4, but eventually in that about two and a half year period, $61 million got to Generation Now. The co-defendants in this case, along with Larry Householder, are, are all political advisors, uh, lobbyists, who all worked in different capacities. But make no mistake, this is Larry Householder's 501c4, as alleged in the charges. The first part of, of the scheme, the first part of the affairs of enterprise, what they had to do to do their part, remember, their, their goal was to, for Company A, was to pass House Bill 6 and to maintain House Bill 6. That is, not get it reversed by petition. First thing they had to do is build Team Householder. Team Householder, in, uh, Larry Householder at the time in 2018 was not yet Speaker of the House. Uh, he had to be elected Speaker of the House. So millions of dollars were filtered through Company A, through Generation Now, to numerous dozens of different enterprises controlled by members of the conspiracy to confuse, to, to uh, hide that the money was coming from even Generation Now to Team Householder. Team Householder was 21 candidates in 2018 that were running in the primaries as well as the general elections. Millions of dollars went to support those candidates and to uh, attack their, their uh, rivals to get them elected. It was very successful. Uh, all of the individuals in Team Householder that were funded by Generation Now via co company, company A via Generation Now all voted for Larry Householder to be Speaker of the House. Ultimately, only one voted against House Bill 6. Now that we had in 2018 and 2018, Larry Householder was then elected to as Speaker of the House. Uh, he had his power base. The next step was to pass House Bill 6. In 2019, millions of dollars were filtered from Company A to Generation Now through all of these entities to pass House Bill 6. Many of you may have remembered in 2019, uh, uh, commercials, uh, mail-ins, uh, flyers, they all ultimately came from Company A. That was, in, it was important and in, in, imperative to hide that. And that's what this conspiracy did. Eventually, House Bill 6 was passed. In fact, some of, the, some of the commercials and some of the flyers kept going after House Bill 6 was even passed to what they called, the enterprise called, running cover for the individuals that actually voted for House Bill 6. As you're aware, after House Bill 6 was passed in 2019, there was a ballot initiative to reverse it. There were individuals that were going to try to get the people of the state of Ohio to reverse it via a ballot initiative to kill House Bill 6. At that point, more money, tens of millions of dollars, went from Company A to Generation Now to this filter system to defeat the ballot initiative. That money was used to bribe individuals that worked on the ballot to get insider information, thousands of dollars worth. That money was used to bribe the, the ballot collectors on the street to give them thousands of dollars and a, a flight out of town. That money was even used, hundreds of thousands of dollars of that money were provided to other ballot services, signature services, to do nothing. That is, if the enterprise hires them, 
They're conflicted off of working for the ballot initiative to, to reverse House Bill 6. They were successful. And in return, um, they were able to line their pockets. Millions of dollars went from Generation Now to Company A via gen from Generation Now to the personal benefit of the people in this, in this indictment. Uh, we are still looking into accounts. We are still searching for exactly how much money went into whose account. As far as Larry Householder is concerned, we can tell, you can read by the affidavit, the allegations are about a half a million dollars went to his personal benefit. About $300,000 went to pay uh, uh, off a lawsuit that he had and, and some legal fees. Another $100,000 went to a house in Florida and, and various other money. This, was, this, this investigation started about a year ago, a little over a year ago. It was a very covert investigation. I am not going to get into uh, the, the means of our investigation, but it was critical that we, as the U.S. Attorney's Office and the FBI, uh, kept this a secret investigation. It has now changed from a secret investigation to an overt investigation. We are not done with this case. Uh, there are things we couldn't do before, people we couldn't interview, people we couldn't subpoena, documents we couldn't subpoena, search warrants we couldn't execute, because if it got back to Enterprise, everything would have shut down. We can now do that. And I, I think... Uh, Special Agent Charles is going to talk about that, but there, as of this morning, there are a lot of FBI agents knocking on a lot of doors, asking a lot of questions, serving a lot of subpoenas, executing a lot of search warrants. And that's going to go on for days. There's going to be a lot of busy FBI agents and AUSAs here in the Southern District of Ohio. I want to thank, I know in the affidavit it, it refers to individuals, a uh, number of people who, who were mentioned in the affidavit who came forward, citizens to, to uh, tell us what happened, to work with us, and I want to thank them personally. Uh, we owed them a debt of gratitude for, for what they did, these brave people that came forward, and um, I suspect that, uh, that they will be rewarded, rewarded by this, the, the information that, that the, all the hard work they did and the bravery they put into this has come to something. This is by no means over. We're going to continue with this investigation. Um, we're not going to get into details of what we're going to be doing. Uh, the next time we talk to you about this investigation and about these, these charges will be uh, in regards to anything that is in the public record, anything, any court documents, any filings, any uh, indictments, any charges. We'll, we'll share them with you as quickly as possible. We understand that transparency is important in this, and we will do our best legally and ethically to, to make sure that's done. With that, I'll let uh, Special Agent Charge Hoffman make some comments. Thank you, Mr. DeVillers. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Hoffman. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Cincinnati Field Office. We cover southern and central Ohio, including the Columbus Resident Agency, which is right down the street here. I'm extremely proud of the incredible teamwork that our FBI Public Corruption Program and the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Ohio have put together. I've told David a number of times, whether we're investigating gangs, child sex trafficking, Chinese spies, or public uh, corrupt officials, we make a formidable team when we're teamed up together. I'm extremely proud of the work we've accomplished thus far. The FBI's public corruption program focuses on investigating violations of federal law by all public officials at all levels. Public corruption is actually the top criminal priority for the FBI. We're, we're definitely engaged in combating street gangs and Mexican car drug cartels, child sex traffickers, uh, corporate fraud, health care fraud, but our number one priority in the FBI is public corruption. That's because public corruption erodes public confidence and undermines the strength of our great democracy. Rooting out public corruption is extremely difficult, but is a mission for which the FBI is uniquely suited and postured, trained and equipped we have the experience and skills to conduct 
long-term complex investigations. We use sophisticated tools and techniques that aren't available to some of our state and local partners. We lead undercover operations when necessary. Today's announcement comes with a warning. From City Council to the State House, all forms of public corruption are unacceptable. When it's alleged to reach, reach as high as it has here in the state of Ohio, we expect our citizens here to be appalled and, and to be shocked. They deserve better. The federal complaint charging those arrested today details a shameful betrayal of the public trust. And United States Attorney DeVillers did a great job recapping that for you, and the charging document is, is full of incredible detail for you all to digest. But not only is it a shameful betrayal, but it certainly details, the charging document does, a sophisticated criminal conspiracy to enact legislation on behalf of Corporation A to corruptly defeat a potential ballot initiative that could have gone in front of the Ohio taxpayers and to illegally divert money for their own use, to line their own pockets. So almost $61 million funneled to this criminal enterprise from Company A and its affiliates to aid these efforts. And I think it's, it's an incredible uh, feat. This is the first time racketeering charge has been used on a public official in the Southern District of Ohio. RICO charges are reserved for the most egregious conduct. You've often probably heard about them in a lot of mob cases. But this case is certainly justified for RICO. Our state deserves to have an honest system of government that isn't hijacked by greed or corruption. So we hope this is a reminder to anyone that when law lawmakers act as criminals, the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office are there. We're on, we're on the wall. We're watching for you. If you have information about this public corruption investigation, we want you to have the courage that Mr. DeVillers mentioned for some of the people that he thanked earlier to team with us, help us fight public corruption. If you have information about this case or any public corruption at any level, we want to hear from you. We want to team up with the citizens of Ohio to fight public corruption. I have a tip line that I would like to say for you guys, and, and, uh, and I want everybody to call in if, with their tips, and it's 614-849-1777. 614-849-1777. That's our tip line for public corruption. We're looking forward to hearing from the citizens of Ohio. We know that there's information that uh, you want to bring forward, and we're, we're there for you, and we're looking forward to teaming with you. Thank you very much. That's really not. I mean, the only difference is the generation now can't go to can't go to prison, um, but it can pay fines, can pay restitution, uh, it can uh, be shut down, it can be forfeited. So that's the the same rules of, of evidence, the same um, uh, burden of proof, and elements of offense take place as if it's an individual. Sure. Um, as I said before, individuals that, in, in, that work for Company A and in, in, in the Company A in and of itself, um, we're going to continue to investigate this and we're going to investigate it wherever it leads, whoever it is, and whoever they work for. Excuse me, those on the line, can you, can you please mute yourself again? We've got, we've got someone coming through. Thank you. So your investigation, did you determine that any of these people that I think as alleged in the affidavit, you can read that, but I think there's absolutely, uh, as alleged in the aff affidavit, there's a strong inference that these, this, this enterprise went looking for someone to bribe them. So the investigation is continuing. Uh, we, we've, I've uh, briefed uh, recently uh, Ron O'Brien, the Penn County Prosecutor, as well as, as uh, Attorney General David Yost, 
uh, as well as uh, uh, Justin Herbin, my counterpart in the Northern District. There, there could be some offenses, and I'll let you ask them, uh, that may uh, uh, come out of this that, that are, are state campaign finance sort of, of crimes rather than federal racketeering. But we're going to, again, we're, we're still not sure where this is all going to lead. We're, we're continuing to investigate this case. We have no evidence that it touches the government's office at the time. And I would say that uh, I don't know. I mean, you, you can look at the affidavit. There's a, a, it talks in detail about where a lot of the money went, uh, went to. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, benefits other than money going directly to people, uh, power-wise, as far as their, their campaigns, as far as uh, uh, things to, to benefit their campaigns. It didn't actually go into their, to their campaign funds. Um, as much like a, a PAC or super PAC does, but this is not a PAC or super PAC. This was created completely and utterly to hide where their donors, their donor, came from and was. So, going back to her question, uh, has, there, has there been any indication that some of the candidates that were part of that in California had any sense that they were unfairly benefiting from the, the campaign contributions that were flowing into their races? I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, they're, not, they're not charged, at least at this point, and. Uh, the affidavit is, is very detailed. It's 81 pages, I believe, and, and you, can, you can make your, your own, own judgment on that. As you said uh, during your remarks, um, th they were successful at every step of the way in this conspiracy. And so now uh, this corporation is set to get a billion dollars from the taxpayers. Is there any way to turn that back? A billion and a half. A and a um, half. You know, that, a lot of that's outside the... the, the, the the Department of Justice, a lot of that's going to have to deal with the, the people of the state of Ohio. I will say this, and I want to make this clear. We are not commenting as to the wisdom of House Bill 6. And it was clear from the affidavit that, that House Bill 6 was passed with millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, that were hidden from the people of the state of Ohio. That, that I think, would be clear that that's the allegations in the affidavit. But the ultimate wisdom of the law, we are clearly not going to make any, any comment on. I'm not going to comment on that this time. David, how, how shocked were you when you finally went over these details about how intricate this was, how it was able to go on for so long in 2017? Um, can you describe just how complex this was and, and your reaction when you, when you understood just how invasive this was? It is extre extremely complicated, extremely complex. I do want to thank all the, the, the agents of the FBI that worked hard digging all this. This is thousands and thousands of powers of, of manpower. I want to thank uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Emily Gladfelter, who is our, our, our uh, Deputy Criminal Chief in Cincinnati, and Assistant U.S. Attorney uh, Matt Singer for all the work they've done on it. But it, um, it, I, I've, uh, this, this, this affidavit and um, the reports that we've, we've been through, it, the first time I read through it was a, almost a year ago. I was briefed in. It, it took me months, to honestly, to really get a grasp of, of what we're dealing with. And we were still and are still getting more and more information Every day on this case. What happened to Open Area House and Larry Hulse over there? So, right now, Larry House is charged by complaint. Um, uh, I believe that the preliminary hearing was set for, for early August. Um, if he's not indicted by that, that point, if a, a grand jury does in fact uh, decide to uh, indict, if it's presented, then we'll have a preliminary hearing and um, on, on all uh, really six, including Generation Now defendants, and pr establish probable cause for, for the complaint. That's the next step. Uh, right now, it's it's right. It, it's going in the end. It's going to be up to Chief Judge uh, Marbley where it's tried. But at this point, uh, we are are uh, proceeding within uh, the Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio. Is there a reason for that? That's where the investigation took place. I've got a question online. If you guys can still take it. Yeah. Um, is there any? Um, do you have any information that shows whether the company was aware of how this money was being used? Uh, I think I'll just stick with the four corners of the affidavit. If, if you read through that, again, it's, it's 81 pages. Uh, I think you can make your own, your own judgment call on that one. And, and I'm sorry I'm not answering a lot of your questions, but I, I can only stick to the four corners of the affidavit. Um, I have a question on the line, if, if that's 
if that's all, if you have time. Go ahead. Um, for those of us who haven't been able to access the affidavit electronically, can you, do you mind just confirming the names of the, other, of the other defendants? I'm sorry, the names of the other defendants? Yes. Yes. Um, along with Larry Householder, the charges uh, involve uh, Jeff Longstreth, Neil Clark, Matthew Borges, and Juan Ses I'm going to butcher this name. Seth Cespedes. Cespedes. You mentioned that the uh, governor's office was, was not implicated in the Senate. Was this taken as restricted to the House, or was there a Senator that was involved? I guess I can say this, and I want to be clear on this. This is Larry Householder, 501c4. It's He's the leader of, of, as alleged in the complaint, the indictment. It, the, 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 the money from this went to uh, the detriment of, of other candidates, Republican candidates in the primaries, Democratic candidates, candidates in, the, in the general election, and to the people of Ohio. Uh, this is what we have so far. We're going to follow the, the evidence wherever it leads. But yes, I, I, at this, I cannot say that we have any evidence that the state house, or rather that the, the governor's um, office was involved in any way. But to be clear, are there sitting members of the Senate or House that are under investigation currently? I'm not going to say who is under investigation. But are there lawmakers? I'm not going to say that either. So, so yeah. you said it's politically motivated working in this case, right? If who's politically motivated? If Larry Hufford has been the side of the case, this is politically motivated. Uh, well, it's not. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Trump appointee, uh, one, and these are a bunch of Republicans. But, but it, it, it's not, and it won't and never be. We, we are going to follow this and have followed this. I don't care what party they're in. I don't care who they work for. And this is what this office does. David, in, in some respects, it almost felt like we could see a little of this playing out in real time, especially when we got to that street-level stuff and collecting these signatures. I guess when you think back on preventing something like this, do you have any thoughts on what needs to change in terms of the laws I absolutely do, and I can't tell you that. <laughs> I can't comment on that. that's political. I'm, I'm Hatch Act uh, uh, guy, which means I can't uh, talk about political um, activity at all. I, I, it's it against law. I think that uh, any time that you can have uh, transparency, transparency in law and in um, campaign finance, it's good for everybody. I know you said the investigation is continuing, but do you have any idea how many people total were involved in this? How many people knew what was going on? Are we talking about people in the dozens, less than 10? Um, I, I think you can. I, I'm going to stick to the four corners of the affidavit. You, you can read through the affidavit and make a decision on that. But there, certainly the affidavit talks about other individuals, uh, whether their involvement was criminal, whether it was it was just an, an, an you know innocent person, or whether it was something in between. Uh, I'll let you past the Jesuit for now, we're going to investigate and see if, in fact, who they are, what their involvement was, and that is going on. I can't stress enough how busy um, this office uh, is going to be and, and the FBI is going to be and are, are right now trying to figure all that out. All right, this is, I, I, I know there's, I, I know there's, you don't bring a case. Unless, when you get a chance. I know you don't bring a case unless you're uh, confident that it's uh, a strong case, but I mean, is there any way to look at this as any kind of gray area or somebody didn't know the rules or is it as naked as so, funny things about our ethical rules: uh, prosecutors cannot comment on the strength of, of the evidence until the, the, the before a trial, and so I'm, I'm stuck with those rules of ethics. They're they're they're, they're right rules, but I won't comment to, as to the strength of the case. But, but is there any way to look at, at, at the laws they broke and say, oh, maybe they didn't know and they, they screwed up? You asked me to comment on the strength of the case <laughs> in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take this question in the corner, and then we'll go oh, back on the line. I haven't had time to read through all 80 pages yet, but in the press release it says money was coming in from March 2017 to March 2020. Can you comment on why or how that stopped? Um, no. I can comment on how it's it, it went through the 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 the. the, the how it did within the time period of the affidavit, because that's in the four corners of the affidavit. But it went through. There are many millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, that went at different time periods. The, the, the initial uh, for, for Team Householder was the, the initial money going through. And it gets into detail on that, a, a few million dollars. And then it got more when the, when the House Bill 6 was needed to be passed. We're talking about 
almost 10 or more million dollars going through, and then it really got heavy when they needed to, uh, um, as alleged in the in the complaint, to kill the petition drive uh, to, that would circumvent House com House Bill Six. Let's take a few more questions on the line, then, Linda. Hi. Um, yeah, I just had a question on the uh, lawmakers you're looking at. Are they um, all within the House? Republican caucus, can you say, or are they in both chambers and both parties? So, I, I, again, I, I'm not saying who we're, who we're looking at or d describing them, other than the fact that we are continuing to investigate the case, and I, we'll, we'll take it to whatever party it leads to, whoever is involved. Uh, we're not concerned about what party they are in or, or what if they're in the Senate or the House, anywhere, we're, we're going to just uh, go for it. So did the FBI know about any wrongdoing? Did the, um, were those directed at both, were those uh, efforts directed at, at both parties and both chambers? The efforts well, you can, the bill. you can, you can, you uh, can read through the affidavit, make a decision on that, but it, a lot of the bill was, was, I really, the effort was to, to deal with the, the people of the state of Ohio. I mean, it was the, the, the vast majority of money of the $61 million went to ads and advertisements and flyers. Did, it, the, okay. did the FBI know this was criminal before House Bill 6 passed? Um, we knew it was cr criminal by, by the time we had probable cause to do the, the arrest. You, what, what you have to understand is the vast majority of this is document-based. Um, you'll see from the affidavit, yes, there's, there's, some, there's some recordings and there's some, some monitoring, but that had to be corroborated. So we are, are still getting these documents that we have to go through. A lot of it's bank accounts, uh, bank records, uh, financial transactions, millions, and I literally mean millions of pages of it. So it take, even, even when we get something, it takes us a while to, to be able to, to kind of go through that and really know what's in it. So that's, that's what took so long. I think you're wondering if we could have prevented House Bill 6 from being passed if we had brought this uh, forward sooner. We brought it as soon as we, we brought it forward as soon as we could make a charge. David, do you have audio or video recordings of House builders accepting bribes? I think that if you look at the affidavit, you'll see it, the, the big picture of that, of exactly what he knew and exactly whose whose 501c4 that was, um, and, and as alleged in the in the affidavit. Um, it, it, it is alleged in the affidavit that this is Larry Holder's, Larry Householder's 51C4 that the $61 million went through for his benefit financially to get power to get this House bill uh, uh, passed for Company A. So he's directing all of the money you're saying. He's directing, he's telling where the money goes. As alleged in the affidavit, absolutely. Well, there's two more questions. I have one back here and one here. David, you talked about the You know what makes me angry is uh, we, only, we have limited resources. We have uh, uh, in Franklin County and all of a sudden Ohio, we have a, just massive overdose epidemic where we've got people dying of fentanyl, people stacking up like cordwood at our corner's office. We've got a violent crime rate skyrocketing. We've got two Franklin County Sheriff's deputies shot this morning in Columbus. We've got cases with real victims. And I have to take we have to take our resources away from those real victim cases and investigate and prosecute uh, some politicians who just won't do their damn job. That's what makes me angry. And I understand, and we both were just talking about this, everything begins and ends with rule of law. And if we have legislatures or leaders passing laws that they themselves are corrupt, then the, those laws are, are, are themselves corrupt. So. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question. Uh, I will say, to give you a scale, uh, an idea of the scale, I mean, uh, the long-term investigation piece, I think, speaks for itself. But this is the first Speaker of the House to uh, be arrested in 10 years uh, on a, st a state Speaker of the House uh, on an FBI investigation, 10 years. And so um, they're, they're rare, uh, and this is certainly egregious, as evidenced by the RICO complaint. Would this change have occurred if Generation Now had been required by law to disclose its donations? I don't see how it possibly could have. 
but again, you can read the affidavit and, and make your own judgment on that. Again, the, the, the vast majority of, of, of money went to advertisings, uh, uh, pressure put on other uh, speakers, uh, House members to vote certain ways, to get himself empowered to be speaker before he could do any of this, this stuff. So that's the, the means of how they went about doing it. Also to uh, completely attack uh, opponents of individuals they thought were, were going to help them, to attack these uh, petition campaigns that were trying to uh, fight against House Bill 6 uh, and, and to hire uh, and private investigators to, to, to uh, put surveillance on the people writing them, to bribe individuals within those uh, uh, companies that, that were doing it, and to literally bribe signature people trying out training on the street giving signatures and giving plane tickets to, to leave the, the city, the state. Um, it's normal for a PAC and a super PAC, exactly. Uh, the, the 501c4 is supposed to be for social uh, social programs. Dave, have you requested that uh, Lower House Building bring this task forward to anybody that's uh, legal to be doing this? You know, I, I wasn't there for the initial appearance, but ter the, our, our common uh, uh, restrictions are, yeah, give a passport, don't travel outside the Southern District of Ohio. So I would imagine they're saying. I'll let, do you want to take some of this? Sure. Go ahead. So he is very cooperative. Um, I, actually, the couple of the agents that were there uh, said that uh, he acted as a, a, a gentleman and uh, he did not resist. Uh, he was Mirandized. There was, there was no statement or no, no, there was no interview, uh, but um, he was very cooperative. Um, evidence. Yeah, evidence. evidence. <laughs> Well, it usually takes someone very courageous to come forward, um, so I'll leave it at that, and that's, that's why I've implored uh, people. I hope that this case gives other people in the state of Ohio confidence that they can come forward with uh, allegations of public corruption and uh, let us do uh, what, what we're designed to do. And, um, but I, I, I would say that that's, that's how this started. It started with someone being very courageous. I believe I believe the complaint um, does discuss. You know, the letter can be very per persuasive, and so um, it doesn't always have to be money. Power, power is important. That's why it was important for him to become the speaker. You can exert a lot of authority and a lot of pressure with power. Power is very influential, and so it's not it's not just about the money. It's it's about the position. Have you uh, frozen any campaign uh, assets and bank accounts associated with this? So. I will say that we uh, we've, we've become extremely busy. Uh, I think it was at Churchill you said, uh, David. It's, this is the uh, this is the end of the beginning, right? And not the uh, not the beginning of the end. Uh, a lot of target letters went out today. A lot of subpoenas been knocking on a lot of doors, search warrants, bank accounts. A lot of overt activity we couldn't have done that would, the, the the covert activity uh, kept us. It got us to this point. The over, uh, overt activity would have tipped tipped our hand and. And so I think forfeiture and seizure will be a, uh, hopefully a big part of this case. I think the people of Ohio deserve to get uh, some of that back if we can. So we're going to try to do that. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.